actual life. Uh, can go for the Kalista yourself versus Nongshin, but as we already highlighted, the Draven risk is fairly high. Um, looks like they will uh, see that Draven risk and decide we don't care. Uh, the Vibe pickup, Blind here coming through, is uh, one that after the previous game I am completely on board with. I think Dread clearly felt extremely comfortable on the champion. Uh, and he was able to have a dominating early game performance. Now, of course, the Wukong has been taken away, but we've seen the Vibe picks in many ships. Another notable pick um, that I think Nongshin might be looking towards here is whether or not they can pick themselves up. The, yeah. I, I I'd much up. prefer Renata. I just feel like if you pick Renata, then you can Renata Draven or Renata Callista. But a Mumu. Ah, uh, yeah. Sure. I, I, I got to say, yeah, there it is, unsurprisingly. Um, Amumu and Vi uh, and Kalista together is... You'll take that. I, I think you got to lock in the Amumu here now. Um, does mean that T1 will get the opportunity to really narrow down BDD's champion pool, which has been, uh, up until that Silas was picked up, something that we've often talked about. But I think it's too high value. Um, we have seen what that matchup can provide. This is going to be putting the faith in BDD. Um, and also might call upon Snowflower's champion pool if uh, T1 actually do decide to throw a couple of bands his way. Yeah, and there's also a lot of things that can be played alongside Callista. Of course, we did get, you know, Ruler in Life's lesson. Um, I think it was last year or the year before, where Callista Rakan really, really broken. Uh, Callista uh, Gragas has always been very good, and although not necessarily as much of a bottom lane pick. But there are a lot of things that become an availability uh, when you have the Fates Call available. Um, so T1 now have the opportunity to at least get rid of something like the Amumu, um, but still plenty of other options. Could even just go towards Callista Tom Kench if you felt like it um, was an oldie but a goodie. Don't know whether it's necessarily one I'd like to take into Renata Glask, but certainly an option here if they would like to go there. Nongshim also getting a very strong mid jungle 2v2. Uh, that thing will be hard to match here from T1, provided that uh, most of the picks that you'd expect to come through, either Lee or the uh, Viego, are the most notable ones that are still up. Um, I think we'll not have the best of times into the Ari and the Vi. Both Ari and Vi are able to deal with the Azir relatively well. Uh, incredible amount of damage, as well as the clear CC chain that is available to you. Uh, providing all the power. And Nongshim, after seeing the previous two games, uh, even though T1 won game number one, I think Nongshim has actually been the better team in uh, all three or all two rather early games that we have seen. As, whoa, that is a cheeky one. <laughs> I'm li I'm, I, I like it. I have been pretty outspoken about Blitzcrank being one of the very few truly obnoxious champions to play into us. Not only Renata, but Lulu is another example. Yeah. Um, just very, very hard to deal with. Fresh Kalista is one that has been picked many a time, but of course, fresh right now, just not in the best of spots, so I expect them to uh, pass that up in favor of something that Snowflower feels more comfortable on. And once going to be yep. locked away. Kana once again going to be on this champion. And this is blind, so of course, uh, Zaius has an opportunity to pick whatever he would like into it. Uh, Trundle has been banned, so no subjugates to worry about or anything like that. But still, plenty of options into the on uh, for Zeus, who does have a very deep champion pool. Uh, Zin out being considered here for Ono. A lot of battle capabilities. Is that Zach? All right, we're just going to lock in Zach. Um, Zeus has been spamming top Zach, and Zach actually has a great matchup into tanks due to the fact that he does an incredible amount of health damage. And I'm, there it is. I can't wait. I'm hoping we get it actually locked in. I'm not gonna yell in excitement until we uh, we see the confirmation but looking very likely here atlas all right so day is going to be playing it viego will be locked in for ona so a lot of reset potential here on t1 side and a lot of snowball as well as oh my goodness this would be a blast from the past i can't actually remember what it's not so it's uh it's cloud templar and it's Conqui that are on the desk at the moment um would have been a bit of a shout out to oh. uh Good old Gorilla if it was the cannon, but instead it's Ash support and Callista here for the bottom side of the map. And this means that they will have a heck of a lot more laning presence. 
Yeah, I, I love the Ash. Uh, I think Ash Callista into Renata. Uh, Ash provides not only kind of a Renata light experience, we're actually able to harass the lane sufficiently, but Ash in general is a great utility pick that uh, I think, especially in the support role, has really shown in the few games we've seen her this uh, split. Um, the downside is that uh, I, I do think picking Ash into Zac, uh, if the Zac is half capable, is an absolute nightmare. Um, same for Callista, honestly, because once he gets on top of you, he will uh, he will decimate. Oh. Um, but I'm seeing Zach top. I'm seeing Callista Ash. I can't wait, Atlas. Can't believe that this series is a banger, but here we are. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, yeah, we were kind of expecting a bit of a shellacking here between yeah. these two teams, but uh, instead we've got Zayas bringing out his dark Zach technology uh, against the Orn here towards the top side, as well as Ash Callista for the bottom lane which, like you say, could certainly be a very dangerous time for Snowflower, but at least there is a Fate's Call to try and get him to relative safety. It's a, it's a very interesting comp uh, to come through from Nongshim, but the same thing can be said for that of T1 on the other side. And we have to remember, it's Gumiushi on his Draven. Uh, his Draven has been fantastic. has been basically permanently banned after that one week where he just played too many games of it. And everyone was like, well, this shouldn't happen again because he is a little bit too strong. And our carrier is on the Renata Glask as well, a champion with a lot of skill expression that he is certainly able to do a lot of good things on. And overall, I think the skirmishing power of the T1 comp, very scary, but that 5v5 for Nongshim, look at Frightening as well. Yeah, let's see how it's going to go as we hop onto the rift for game number three. Alright, here we are, making our way out onto the rift. Nongshim, this is the first time they've been on the red side so far today. And as far as the draft is concerned, not looking too bad. And they're going to be able to uh, walk their way around this bottom lane to their heart's content with the early game they do have available to themselves. Of course, standing behind Kanner and having Frost Shot available for an Ash, certainly something that's going to make you feel pretty good as Zayas didn't go for the Margin Boost skin, which makes me a little bit sad, although that still does look pretty uh, Dragon Ball Z with this particular skin. More like a bad guy from Metroid Prime. It really is. Yeah. You Metroid know? Prime. Maybe like a some, space uh, pirate, one of the, the big bad boy space pirates from Metroid yeah. Prime 1. Yeah, I can see it. I like it, though. So, Zach Top. Talk about it a little bit, because uh, uh, I don't know if I'll ever get the opportunity again, and I love this pick. Um, is looking at the runes here, no surprises, has gone for the uh, second wind, as well as the um, name escapes me, but it gives you more healing, which, yep, Zach, you're always going to make very, very efficient use of. Uh, and the reason why Zach, I think, is a really exciting prospect to see is outside of the... Uh, Outside of Charm, it, it's relatively hard for Nongshim to actually cancel the Elastic Slingshot, which has an incredible amount of backline threat, especially for uh, relatively immobile characters that we see on the side of Nongshim. Um, with the amount of ability that Zack had, can be really hard to stay away from. But also because um, between his W and uh, Demonic Embrace second, which we have seen a lot of Zacks go for, because it is an incredibly efficient item, the amount of damage that he does, even to someone like Kana, is very impactful as Carrier. Yeah, flash for flash here already between our two supports. Very aggressive moves. Skumiyushi able to speed himself up with that W. And Nongshim just going to have to wait for this wave to head their way. Gumiushi's Draven, very dangerous, and if he can do this, if he can just freely run at Ghost and Snowflower, they're going to have a bad time. However, Vi in the area, and is oh now looking God. to slink around I think he might flash shot. He's going to flash over the wall. He might even Vault Breaker, we'll see. As Dread does make Aww. it into the brush, he didn't flash. Yeah. As Ona, looking to dash forward, doesn't get the stun, as Carrier looking for a potential handshake, but I believe Vault Breaker just coming out. And Dread yeah. is going to make it to safety. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. That's why I was hoping, uh, as uh, Zeus, of course, has uh, uh, an incredible amount of sustain. And another cool reason. Oh, hold uh, up. BDD in trouble here. Faker wanting to find a couple more autos. Needs a second, and BDD is going to flash preemptively. As okay, Dread is here, but BDD not going to be caught window shopping. Does not matter. Owner's still going to come through, grab that kill, and Faker still gets the assist. Oh, and this is looking like a very different game. Oh, As, um, yeah. In case you missed it, it was uh, Looper 
versus SKT Impact. Oh the last time we saw the goodness. Zach top plate. So that's... Um, was that 2014? Yeah, I think it was. I didn't catch the timestamp, but it was... Uh, it might have been even speed. earlier. Very long time ago as all oh, bot lane gang from Dread. All right, let's see whether he can make it work this time around as Gumiusha Carrier are pushed relatively far up. Carrier, no flash, remember, as in he comes. All right, there it is. The flash forward Carrier is real dead. He tries to bail himself out. Not going to be able to grab Gumiushi as well, but Snowflower able to get a bunch of extra autos, and Gumiushi's going to have to go back home. Faker going aggressive one more time. Orb of Deception going to be avoided beautifully here as BDD just not allowed to lane. Faker took that last game absolutely personally. Yeah. Did not enjoy it at all. Um, okay, Benedict's just gonna get flashed on. He didn't have flash for it this time around and Faker's just gonna solo kill him. I mean... He's bad. Yeah, yeah we, we've yeah, seen angry so Faker before, but this is this is not else. what I was expecting this game. No. Uh, Azir, not generally known for his um, his laning. Well, say that we have Trophy in this league as well. Um, so it's it's not actually too shocking. BDD himself has been a uh, an expert in this uh, specific scenario where you just kind of boom enemy laners, even though it feels like you shouldn't for the entirety of last year on Gen G. So no huge surprises there. Um, and even with that bot side play working out due to the incredible amount of pressure that Faker has been able to generate in his one v one, as we're also going to go back to the previous one. Um, yeah. I, I think BDD uh, just not respecting the amount of early game damage that he can do, and every time a skill shot doesn't uh, go the way that uh, uh, go the way of Faker, and Faker sees one being thrown into the ether, he just goes in so hard. Love this bot lane play. Uh, Dread, of course, there are flashes, but it's a spectator, so uh, sometimes you get some weird looking movement. Yeah. Um, nicely done. Ideally, you did Guma, but I think any kill that you can take there is quite huge. As again. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, Q gets thrown, and Faker knows I can just go in here. Yeah. I have it. Not going to have enough damage. No flash available for BDD. And I think the bot side play was aimed for Carrier because he still didn't have his flash. Yeah, so it was course. the easiest one. Um, so Nongshim able to go over there and get that one. Ona here towards the bottom side. Nongshim still trying to play this one as aggressively as they can. As you can see, goes with a slight CS advantage as Dread. He's going to rotate down. Don't believe Ona does have knowledge of Dread's whereabouts right here. As they do have a ward in that brush if he does decide to Vault Break in. But as you can see, Longshim just catching waves underneath their turret for now. Still T1 with the control of the lane. And Owner also going to have control of the river. So, Zayus getting some vision himself. And uh, BDD, this is only going to get worse um, now that he's died twice. Um, this lane basically does not exist for Nongshim anymore. And Faker really oh, yeah. taking matters into his own hands. Yeah, it's horrible time. Uh, owner also making use of the pressure that he has uh, in bot and in mid. Pick himself up an early Drake. And I really like the adaptation here from Kana going for the tier this time around because one of the benefits that we haven't gotten to talk about because actually a very uh, action-packed early game of the, uh, the Zac is that, of course, he's resourceless. So he's going to basically have infinite staying power against a champion like Orn that just doesn't really reliably have the damage uh, to keep him down. As long as he can pick up his blocks, he's going to be completely fine. So tier helps Kana stay in lane for a lot longer, mitigating some of the pressure that uh, the Zac might otherwise have. As mentioned, uh, Zay is of course going to go for W Max here, uh, one of the best trading skills uh, that the Zac has available. He probably going to be Max seconds as uh, on jungle, like you, you're not really a champion be until you get like three points in your E. Yeah. Um, and even then, like it's just it feels a little like lost. You know, you got to really be able to take down the enemy from um, your red buff. That's when you feel like you're truly, you're truly zacking. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's the level of zack that we've come to expect. Uh, of course, I think our most famous or uh, most likely zack picker was um, Cuz back in the day. Of course, uh, him on Longju uh, was definitely a zack enthusiast back then. It's been a long time since we've even seen Zack in the jungle, to be perfectly honest. So really cool to see that uh, Zayas is picking him up here. See how he does go right now. Very even as far as farm is concerned. Bit of a wet noodle fight as, I mean, Zack basically is just a huge noodle anyway. He actually is. Yeah. yeah. No, kind of formless, so not exactly as tubular as a noodle is. However, it still kind of does fit. It's also why it's so hard to make skins for him, because he's kind of just a blob. 
Yeah. Yeah. Or it's it's either hard or really easy. <laughs> yeah, they've already been done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, BDD, yeah, just taking way too much damage here. Um, is doing okay now. Does have his flashback available again, and Spirit Rush is going to allow him to um, stay a lot safer. But the damage is kind of being done over there, and we actually saw this yesterday. Um, kind of mitigated, actually, in the end by Live Sandbox, but Closer having a bad game on the Ari, and you just fall into a trough, and it's really hard to get out uh, without a bunch of assistance from the rest of your team. T1 with a bit of a rotation here towards the top side to try and get a whole bunch of plates. Nongshim staying here on the bottom side and uh, will be able to get a bit of a plate gank here from Dread. We'll see whether they can race this turret down. Kana, no. Um, no. this is dangerous. Yeah. Rolling Death is going to fly on forward as Zayas is going to get spotted. There it is. And that just clears up basically the whole wave. And they only get two. Yeah, I mean, even even if, if Zayas doesn't rotate their arrive, which beautiful display of uh, map movement here from T1. Um, like, you're not going to be able to get through the additional plate armor due to you having multiple people there. Works for the Fierce Tree Plates, because Vi, of course, has a lot of plate damage built into a kit. Um, that's, wow, that, that was a close. great interrupt. Um, but you're playing into Herald as well. So there is really never a way. Nice counter by Makana. As, oh boy. Uh, okay, well, Ghost is just going to get bounced on. Um, can he hop away, though, is the question. The answer is yes. So, doesn't use any summoner spells. Looks pretty cool there from Zeus, but isn't actually able to lock down the kill. But still, dissuades Ghost from staying in the lane. Yeah, as a uh, strike. That's going to come through there as he pulls him towards the minion. But, uh, yeah, um, passive going to go down. Baker can TP. Uh, he could, but he's not going to because yeah. I think he dies if he does that. Probably, yeah. I, I mean, I don't think it was a good opportunity. I just want people to know that you can teleport to, to ah, right, the yeah. sex blob. Yeah, you can. You can yeah. do that. Although, I don't I, You don't have unleashed a teleport yet, so I, I guess you can't. Oh, yeah, you can't. can't. <laughs> Never mind. Well, that was a He will be able to in a That was a string a few minutes. of realizations, Atlas. Yep. Back to back to back. He will be soon. Yeah. So, yeah. Pre-14 minutes, you definitely can't. However, you can yes. once you have a real teleport available. So next time that your uh, Zach yeah. really uh, pinks your teleport after he dies because he made a mistake, um, now you know why. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, but that was not a great play for no. Andreas there. I'm um, getting a little bit ahead of himself, a little bit overly enthusiastic about his Zach pick, and uh, will fall down. That does give a bit of breathing room over to Noxion. They still have a gold deficit that they're dealing with, largely due to, due to the fact that... Uh, the GOAT himself in the mid lane is playing very, very well. He's going to do it again. Empress divide onto two. Immediately, Dread is going to be taken down. BDD, hostile takeover is going to come through as once more. Owner is just dashing underneath turrets here. Finds another stab. Transforms into an Ari and will immediately get taken down. But still, it's a whole lot of kills going over to T1. Going to be nicely done there. Uh, Snowflower still alive. Oh dear, the stretching strike going to come through once again. Snowflower in a bit of trouble, but now Zayas is in between turrets and he has no passive. He does flash W and he is going to be taken down for his trouble. So, Canna breathes on him and that is going to be a one for one top laner for support. And Zayas, who's been a paragon of consistency, just not having the greatest day today. Um, able to pick up the kill, sure, but uh, not oh, something that it. I think is oh. really necessary as Ghost knows. Bubble left? Will, will, will. <laughs> oh, and the arrow connects as well. Yeah, yeah, that's the uh, main reason why uh, there wasn't Bubble really left. any recourse. Because uh, if the arrow doesn't connect, uh, I think Zayas, in uh, his mind, can just E out uh, the moment he gets to cancel. But it's not going to be the case really nicely. This is just a great setup by, uh, by Faker combined with good ultimate um, from Carrier in a choke point. Ooh, well, another arrow is going to connect here as the Onhorn's also going to come down. It's so much CC onto Ona, who's just constantly in the air. What the hell was that? I want that replay because he was CC'd for, I think, like Dota levels of time. Are we, is this game two again? What the? Whoa. whoa. Yeah. Well, Ona wasn't allowed to play League of Legends. Not particularly, no. Um, I'm, I, I, is Nongshim just going to find a mick in spike again? <laughs> kind of mind blowing. Um, I don't know, Chronicler. Are we still asleep? Actually, are we well, dreaming? We, we, we could be. Um, it's been uh, 12 games and a Fox State recording. 
and um, this is going to free, and presumably the next series will, so... Yeah, could be. Well, there's a handshake. It's going to get an arrow out as Kerry is taking a lot of damage here. In goes Zayas, of course he does, and they lock down the Ash. Of course, no uh, ulti for Ghost, and so therefore, not going to be able to stop that one from happening. Kerry is still very, very low, though, as a beautiful handshake just to deny any sort of follow-up, and uh, Nongshim will not be able to mitigate the problem. So, 2,000 gold behind is Nongshim still. Yeah, uh, killed not going to Guma, crucially. I don't, I didn't catch how many stacks he's sitting on right now, but a cash in for him would have been absolutely huge. Unfortunately for Owner, he doesn't have his Heartbreak. So, as this uh, Bouncy Castle, which was... Um, I mean, it's okay. If he had Heartbreaker, it wouldn't have worked. Well, maybe he could have gotten out of the chain at some point. But uh, he didn't. So, he didn't. Uh, Really nice uh, CC layer coming through here uh, from the rest of T1. Obviously trying to get a kill for Guma. Not going to be able to do that, but as long as Guma stays alive, uh, the cash out will come eventually, is the idea of T1. Zayus, despite all these shenanigans and uh, a relatively subpar uh, amount of CS due to him being extremely proactive and also dying twice, uh, still has a bounty. Which, yeah, no, that is very strange. That is interesting. Uh -huh. and, uh, might be having a 5v5 here, Atlas. Yeah, BDD waiting in the brush. Owner moving on over. Good little charm. Will connect, but he dashes out of the way of the Everfrost. I think Shirley's going to go down, but can T1 find themselves a team fight is the question. I, the Herald, is uh, a rough prospect here for Nongshim, but Ornhorn does fly through. Arrow going to sail by majestically. Isn't going to get too much. And Nongshim going to be denied the eye. There's, in fact, a rock that's put on top of it. Um, Kana really wishing that a rock could claim the eye. Um, but it unfortunately, he's unable to do so. And T1 is just going to make it so that the Rift Herald pretty much never happened. Um, much about with nothing. an identity crisis. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if, if a Rift Herald is, is taken down, but no one is there to pick it up, uh, did it really happen? Did we it will never know. Sound, yeah. uh, as overall, um, T1, making sure that Nongshim can't try and claw their way back. Zayus going to be on his way. We'll get Gret, uh, Grit very warmly here. Yeah, Gret finds himself a fall breaker. But uh, yeah, we're going to be out elastically slingshot as well as uh, Blast Cone. And everything is going to be absolutely fine. Isn't the slingshot always elastic? Um, Wouldn't you need like a certain degree of elasticity for it to work? I mean, it depends. Like, is it is a? I guess, yeah. No, you would. Uh, is okay. That's an arrow. I think it's a ground. Fake is like. Why? I guess maybe it <laughs> saves the turret. Why? Why? <laughs> very weird. Why, Atlas? <laughs> Sorry. No, I'm not uh, blaming you. I'm just. I'm a. Uh, it did stop that turret from going down that wave. Yeah. It goes down the next wave. However, tempo or something. Insert buzzword here. Well, actually, no, B2D is able word. to walk up and actually, uh... Tempo is very relevant. How dare you? How dare you say that? I mean, it, it is a bit of... It's a bit of a caster buzzword, okay? It has been in the past. We've fallen in love with Tempo in the past. It is de definitely a thing, okay? We have to be self-aware. Or at least try. Trying to focus on the video game, okay? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't have time for no self-reflection. All right. Unbelievable. We'll bother as... review later. <laughs> and I think maybe this whole game will have to be omitted. As uh, T1 oh. setting up for a Cloud Drake. It is a Cloud Soul. And uh, I'm, of course, super psyched about that. Ghost yeah. is in base, so we're not fighting for it. And uh, T1 will just secure it for themselves. Of course, Nongshim do have themselves one Hextech Drake. And that means that we're not at Soul Point yet or anything like that for T1. And uh, Gumiushi's still looking for that kill. Still wanting to, to get that cash in where it can find it, as T1 just going to follow this minion wave towards an inner turret, potentially. Arrow will connect onto Carrier, as now BDD dashing forward, finds himself a charm, dashes to the side as well as Carrier. Might be able to throw out an ult here, as there's the Assault and Battery. Zayas just right in amongst it, but uh, there is the passive pop. Now you could teleport to it, as now Kana finds himself a great engage, but he's gone too far, and that is going to be the cash in and a double kill for Guma Yushi. All right, Nongshim looked like they were able to fight back, but in the end, T1 find themselves with uh, an extra 2,000 or so gold on their Draven. Yeah.
2400. I don't know how much he had beforehand, but it wasn't that much as a big cash in. Zeus, the sacrificial blob, making sure that Gumayushi just goes home and picks up uh, Lord Dominix right from the get go into the amount of defensive itemization on enemy team. Very, very valuable. And. We are really witnessing, uh, I think despite Zeus's antics, a game that is so much more controlled from T1 in a response to what happened previously. Um, even though so much damage goes down, Karia still has his flash available, so he doesn't actually end up going down. And then, crucially, uh, the Berserk is so big, and then Guma just hits his ult. Uh, Karia's ultimate actually putting the uh, Ari in execute range there. Yeah. And then without the Ari, composition loses a lot of its claws. Gets taken down. Oh, Kana, looking for this Gromp here. Will be able to collect it. Not walking towards uh, that tri brush that was very dangerous for a moment. 4,000 gold lead here for T1. And uh, Gumiushi now picks up Lord Dominic's regard. Uh, I think still going to go towards his collector for the next one. Ghost does have a couple of items, but as you can see, it's a 1,000 gold lead for the Draven, a 2,000 gold lead for Faker after his amazing early laning. And uh, Nongshim, spot out owner, but uh, of course he's able to slink into his mist. He's not going to be seen. And uh, this little gank brush, not going to give too much joy to Nongshim at this stage. Enchanted Crystal Arrow is available, and it's going to uh, just shoot towards the chicken. It says hello. It does. Zayas is here, makes himself known. Hello, Mr. Slingshot Man. Just gonna omit Elastic now. Yeah, we've had that conversation. You've told me that I'm not allowed to say that anymore. That's not what I meant. Well, it's not your fault, Atlas. It's it's how I interpreted it. Well, I didn't mean for you to to, to take it that way. <laughs> we need to talk about this. Yeah, that's horrible. We can do that in the VOD review later. As uh, okay, there's another one. And Stretch Armstrong will connect this time around. Fate's Call will at least allow Snowflower to get out of it. But uh, that is a couple of defensive ultis now on cooldown that Nongshim won't have in order to try and stop this Baron from falling. Kamushi in that mid lane does secure the minion wave. And now Snowflower able to get vision whenever he would like with the Hawkshot availability. Yep. Arrow still being held on to here. Two big ultimates down here for Nongshim. T1 going to try again. Yep, looking for it. T1, uh, BDD off to the side. Wanting to get that flank angle in there. Dread, of course. He can Vault Breaker in any time he wants. Gets into the back of the pit. Nongshim, get in there. They steal away the Baron and they say, say thanks very much as Dread just gets pushed out to safety. Bring it down for me, Chronicler. Well, you, if you flip, sometimes you lose. It's not that complicated. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's not that complicated, Atlas. There's it's a fast go. got to silly. There's a buy. You just flip the Baron because they don't have ults. That's fine. If you actually commit to the team fight. Oh, but dear. they don't commit. So then your lead is not really. Yeah, your lead in terms of fighting doesn't exist. Baron, Baron, do over. Bota. Yeah, uh, 250. So Shunman, uh, an early smite coming through. And um, yeah. the, the most hilarious part of this, no one dies. Yeah. They all make it out. Yeah. Are you okay, Atlas? No. No, I'm very confused about the goings on of this game. Um, I will just go back to play-by-play -play mode, though. Um, Rift Scholar no, I need uh, is going to be claimed here. I don't know either. Or owner. Please, Atlas, um, don't BDD me. continues the split push towards the top side of the map as we've got Snowflower looking for a possible arrow. Will can ooh, Flash comes through from Carrier. That is going to save his life. As Nongshim look to push down with their Baron in hand. That, that's how you're doing it. Okay. Yeah. No, in no, that that's, case. That's, that's how we're doing it. In that case. Um, so, with the Baron buff, I'm surprised to see Nongshim not try and go at least for a contest. Uh, amount of priority they're able to get thanks to this Baron, of course, very, very big. Would really like to see them go for mid, but instead they're looking for a collapse here. Well, they're going to get the double knock-up here by accident, by the looks of things, as another one comes through from Kanner. He does get thrown around as Let's Bounce comes through, whirling death. Not going to get the kill, but Owner is going to be able to pick that one up. Doesn't get the knock-up onto BDD, who can now flash over. Looks for Faker, but he goes golden. Nongshim only with four members left alive as... Okay, Fate's Call is going to come through. That's going to tell Snowflower to stop shooting his teammates. 
As of course, hostile takeover from Carrier just barely nicked the backside of the Ash. And now T1 going to turn this into a pushing opportunity against the Baron. It is only a 500 gold Baron power play as Snowflower is off towards the side as Faker gets hit by yet another arrow. The T1 don't really care too much. There is no follow up potential. Does save the inner turret. No. Um... If Connor was alive, then could have gone for the TP onto that control ward. Not going to be the case here. And T1, they're really trying to push. Connor instead going to teleport towards the mid lane, trying to get. You really want this turret. At the very least, if you don't get the most cool out of this Baron, that's fine. It was a freebie. Uh, it, it was a uh, just get one for free, a promo deal. Um, but you definitely need to make sure that you actually oh. start breaking down the objectives as. Oh boy. Yeah, I'm um, Dread. Very close to having his ulti available. Um, Carrier is very, very dead. Just gonna have to stand there. You can see shaking the head in his player cam. Not the greatest positioning. Holding on to mid though. That's huge. Yeah. Baron now gone. So they managed to stop that from being a problem. 2,000 gold is uh, still the lead here for T1 as BDD looks for Gumushin. Will be able to help take down the kill. Dread was in there as well. And Nongshim should now be able to take this out of turret mid lane. Atlas. Yes. Uh, are they, is it happening? Are they doing it? Well, wow, I'm just really looking forward to seeing what Nongshim can get done in playoffs. Well, let's not talk about that. As overall, um, we still see uh, the fighting power that this T1 composition have in this moment right here, where they're able to really leverage uh, both how far ahead Owner is as well as how incredibly tanky Zeus is. Is going to get clipped there at the very end uh, by the Ari, but. It doesn't really matter. He still has his passive available, so him going down is not the end of the world, especially with Faker coming in for a huge ultimate. And then if Karia is able to actually hit this, uh, unfortunately for him, incredibly slow moving Cloud, uh, he might be fine. And then here, crucially, Snowflower finds a really nice backhand, so and then from this point onwards, unfortunately, it's Karia, you are in this. And that, nothing that can be done about it. The really core thing, 41, I think, looking at these uh, moments that we're seeing here outside of this, just being a really great catch coming through here with the long range engage that Kana, with another great Ord game, um, is, is giving to his team, is that if you commit to the fight, you need to, like, actually all in and win it. Because extended fights against, like, Vi and Ash and Ari is really obnoxious with the amount of chase down that they have, the amount of mobility that someone like Ghost will have as well, especially with an upgraded... Another arrow. There we we'll go. We'll connect onto Faker. Another Ornhorn to come out here as well. Gumushi, the target for that one. A lot of damage being done, but it's BDD that's just blown up. And the damage was so spread from Nongshim. Fate's Call comes out yet again. Dread's gonna have to flash. As without BDD, Nongshim not able to take the fight. Oh, nice cancel on the Q, on the E there uh, with his Q from Dread. Still has the flash, but what you see there is probably the most crown value that a crown has ever valued. Um, <laughs> because, yep. wow, Faker able to tank a lot because of that. And for Nongshim, uh, the arrow is on a, uh, well, he's not level 11 yet, so it might be like still be 40, 50 seconds, but it will be less very, very shortly. Uh, and when, when crown is up, just take your crown um, because the amount of damage reduction uh, is actually pretty substantial. Then a beautiful ultimate from Karyak keeps Faker safe and then the uh, immediate response comes through as uh, Zeus locks down. Uh, still, even with uh, Dread finding cancel there, like Ghost has used his ultimate, Dread has used his flash. So overall, uh, we're still seeing the fighting power. T1 is still in lead, uh, has a lead in terms of gold. Say is now just finishing his formula as well. Going to be even more formidable um, into the uh, amount of auto attacks that Ghost and, uh, is going to be trying to throw Arrow. into him as another one. He really likes hitting the popcorn chickens with those arrows. And I, I really like it from Snowplow. Just throwing them forward. As, speaking of going forward, Faker. Emperor's Divide onto Ghost. The setup is going to be there, but he just takes down the Azir eventually. He will be taken out, but it's a one-for-one one in the end, and the flash-out has to come through from Zeus. Ona still trying to walk up, though, wanting even more. He's uh, taking the form of That's the Callista as BDD is flashing on forward, and yeah, should just be able to walk on over and collect themselves this uh, Cloud Soul. Fighting without Ghost, very, very difficult, so Cloud Soul will be collected for T1. A lot of extra movement speed, things like that. Great stuff you can collect with your own Cloud Soul, if you were able to collect it yourself. Atlas, of course, 
speak cloud, no, local cloud source uh, soul advocate mm -hmm. uh, very happy to always sing the praises and overall i thought nongshin were maybe going to go for a risky baron call uh instead it's t1 for risky baron call number two dreads alive yeah. let's not repeat our mistakes shall we well that's uh to teleport so we've got five members in this pit, BDD is off to the side. It's a lot of damage being done. Zayas wanting to stop Dread from being able to get into that pit, but he gets taken down to his Bloblets. Still going to be the burst damage enough onto the Baron. However, they do lose their Zac. And 21 kills here, 29 minutes into this game. It's pretty bloody, as we're going to check out this fight one more time. And Faker just goes in for a huge play, uh, is able to get both the Flash as well as goes his stopwatch. However, uh, because he also goes down, uh, the immediate response for T1 is not one that they can continue to fight. And I actually love the play from Zeus here. Uh, just gives his life to guarantee that the exact same mistake doesn't happen. Dread goes in, uh, and that's just a crucial little amount of time that needed to be bought. Uh, and as a result, they are able to get themselves the Objective at the cost of a Zac, which is one that you'll be very happy to take. Well, very sneaky is Dread. Spots owner. And uh, owner's gonna dash away. Arrow connects onto Carrier after the flash. And uh, Carrier was never gonna have to worry about anything really. Um, however, still, they managed to get that summoner spell. Pretty crucial. Snowfire doesn't have flash. Need to be very respectful. Faker in particular. Make that play before, looking for it again. Yep. Faker has been so proactive this game. Oh yeah, yeah, he, yeah, it's, it's a very different game. From oh game yes. Two. Having a great one, one, one and eight right now. Not getting a lot of the kills that he likes getting. However, Kumuchi does have uh, three, one and four. He's got his three items that he really does like to have. Decided to skip getting a collector or anything like that. That's serrated Dirk just for the laning phase by I the just, looks of things. Yeah, so, I just salad. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm hoping so. Because right now you at this want point, other things. Oh yeah, and if 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 T1 versus Nongshim is going to come down to an Elder Flip el uh, Atlas, <laughs> then I don't I don't say know. it isn't so chronicle. Oh, it, it, it might very well be, uh, and and I want to really uh, put praise towards Nongshim, even though this game is looking very very different. Um, Seeing a team get a resurgence this deep into the split is really remarkable. I mean, it's, it's heartwarming. It is it, it is it heartwarming, is. but it yeah. is also sad. Um, because if this had have happened a few weeks earlier, then there's a chance that Nongshim could knock out teams like DRX who have been faltering um, from yep. the ability to get towards playoffs. But However, not to be the case. Atlas, we uh, should not be sad about what could have been. We should enjoy what we have, which is an arrow. Which Indeed. Hit arrow. I thought it was good. Well, uh, Dred's now in a heck of a lot of trouble. He's going to ult just to celebrate, as that will be up when he has respawned. As Nongshim now on the back foot, Elastic Slingshot is going to come on through here. Azaeus finds the perfect engage. BDD's going to be eradicated immediately. Ghost down to his GA that he'd only just purchased, as Kana desperately wants to keep him alive. Ona going to mitigate the turret damage as well with the possession. And very comfortably, T1 win a team fight and are now looking to push forward right as the Baron wears off. He they're going to break open the base. He got shield bow. He got oh, a shield bow. That is, that's, that's not fair. That is not fair at all. However, it's just how the Viego works. I remember being very upset about that when Viego was first released. His arrow's going to connect. The volley value is kind of there. Kana has to go golden as the Nexus turrets are the focus. T1 are done with this game. They are done with this series. As Dread makes his way out of the death chamber, Faker taking a lot of damage. As Dread goes into his stopwatch as well, Zayas can tank for a long BD time. BDD on his way. Yeah, looks like T1 are gonna have to get out of this one. But Guma Yushi with so much damage. Kano is a tank, Chronicler. What is happening here? Is now Zayas just looking for a reengage. BDD is gonna use his Zonyas, but the rest of T1 all just collapse around and. Ghost has respawned. He's like, what is going on here? Snowflower is flashing to get himself to safety. Another arrow comes in. Wait. As, what the heck? That was Ona that went down there. It was Ari, of course, because he had Possessor. Is now Dread finds they an left. ulti. Kumiyushi goes into the bailout, but it does not work as Ghost gets a triple. And this is officially silly. I was so sure they were gonna, they were gonna end that loose. Yeah, so was I. We're not done yet. I was I was so sure I was awake as well, but I'm now still wondering whether maybe I'm dreaming. Are we? Is this all a fever dream? I don't know. <laughs> Dread uh, trying to look for a flank gets 
caught out and immediately goes down. Baron Buff is available for T1, so understandably, they go for a hard push. And up until this point, this play is just beautiful. Owner getting the buy, um, and the uh, uh, the army perfectly set up. And then, I, I don't know. Um, I don't even know why I'm talking about a Vi because she died way earlier, but like that, the, the whole sequence of play is crazy. <laughs> yeah. We get them getting the turret this low, and then the moment the Elite comes back up, actually gets a lot of damage, and the mana is getting so low at this point as well. Snowflower is mandating the absolute Imperium out of the uh, T1 backline that is just getting shelled down, getting slowed down as we're oh. not done. Yeah, we got another battle. Cannon's gonna find a few knockups here. Isaiah's taking way too much damage, but BDD gets handshot. Faker gonna lock down the Ari yet again. Ghost trying to stay alive, but it's not going to work. It's the charm from owner of all things. As now Nongshim are officially routed, you can see the teleport already as Elastic Slingshot comes through. Dread's going to pick Zayas up out of the air. And uh, yeah, Zayas not going to be able to kill Dread right now, but there's only one Nexus turret. And T1 are now going to say goodnight to this game. Cannon's going to teleport as Ona's doing his best to do as much damage as possible. But it's not going to work. In a turret in the top lane is uh, where Cannon elected to go because that was the safest place. Empress Divide comes on through and T1 want to get as many of the kills as they possibly can. And uh, they should be able to do so as, of course, Nongshim pretty happy to do some battle right here. Um, T1, you're going to have to just last hit this one um, if you could. And there we go. Dread is going to be taken down and then the Nexus soon to follow as T1 will win the series. Clean, 2-1, nothing to see here. No, no, we're not going back to that joke. It was not clean. I know that's the point of it, but regardless, what a monumental research um, here from the Nongshim Red Force. Incredible amount of resilience even shown in this game. Yeah. They're going into a completely different direction. And the reason why we're focusing on them is because for T1, this should have been a freebie. This should have been an easy pickup. Uh, team should have had no problem whatsoever. And instead, they really had to fight for it. The fact that they were able to, the fact that it didn't completely tilt off the face of the map after some of those plays, I think,